Hello everyone, this is Solomon of Solomon in Demons and today we're going to be talking about what happened to Randall Amplification, why the company had been gone quiet for almost 8 years and why the company haven't introduced any new product in almost 10 years. Now before I give you guys my thoughts and opinions about this topic, we have to learn a little bit of the history of Randall Amplification and his founder Don Randall. Back in his high school days, at the beginning of the 1940s. Randall used to build his own speaker systems and portable amplifiers. He also received his amateur radio license at the age of 16. He will later join the Army Corps of Engineers during the World War II, where he earned his pilot license and became a communicator's chief of a flight school. After the war was over in 1946, Randall headed back to California and eventually decided to get in touch with an individual that he met shortly before the war started, that he shared his passion for radios and amps. His name was Leo Fender. Fender was well into the process of developing the products that would change the face of popular music forever. And in 1953, Randall came on board as Fender's president of sales. It was Don Randall who named the Squire the Telecaster, the Stratocaster for the guitars and for the amplifiers, the Twin River and the Bassman. With his gift of branding and marketing, Randall helped to build the Fender brand. He stayed with Leo until 1964 when the company was sold to CVS. After the company was sold to CVS, Don Randall founded the Randall Company. Founded in 1970, in the early years, the brand was focused primarily on making the use of the new and much more reliable solid state circuits. Solid state amplifiers offered many characteristics that set them apart from the tube amplifiers. Not the fact that they were more reliable, but one thing that was perhaps unexpected was their ability to cope with huge amounts of gain. As the 70s and the 80s, this will became the cornerstone of the brand's success. There were so many guitar players that used Randall in the 70s and the 80s. A couple of examples are Phil Collin from Dead Leopard, George Lynch from Dokken, Neil Sean from Journey, and Sammy Hagar. But the most important guitar player that ever used, that ever was endorsed by Randall amplifiers and that immortalized the brand in the minds that every guitar player that see a Randall amplifier was Dimebag Daryl from Pantera. For the recordings of the music of Pantera and also to play live, uh, Dimebag used the Randall RG100, the Randall RG100 HD, the Randall Century 200. Before he collaborated with Randall getting his own signature heads, the Warhead and the Warhead X2. At the beginning of the 1990s, Don Randall retired and he sold the company to the U.S. Music Corporation, a company that also distributes and owns brands like Washburn Guitars, Jade Torser, Framos, Parker, and Digitech. In these years, the 90s and the early 2000s, Randall keep having a great roster of artists endorsed by the company, and they also brought new artists from bands like Soulfly and Disturb. Also, they had a great team of engineers one of them, the famous Bruce Egnator, who in 2002 was the brain behind one of the most popular modern Randall creations, that was the MTS modular system. This MTS was a big hit. Now, George Lynch, Kirk Hammett, and Scott Ian had their own signature models and their own signature heads. It was until 2012 that the Randall MTS line was discontinued. Now, in 2011, the Randall brand was sold again, this time to the JAM Industries, a global musical corporation. Now, in December of 2011, it was announced by the head of 14 Amplification that they will be teaming up with Randall Amplifiers to design a new tube amp line based on the 14 mid-head amplifier endorsed by Kir Hammett. Now by the time uh, Kir Hammett already had four of the prototypes, one which he used in the Big Four show at the Yankees Stadium. It was also announced that they will be addressing their current amplifier line, both solid state 
and Tuv. In April of 2012, Randall confirmed that the MTS amplifiers were discontinued and they will be replaced by a new high-end line of amplifiers. Also, in April of 2012, Randall Amplification brand director Joy Delany introduced my 14 as the exclusive designer engineer for Randall Amplification. The first priorities of the company will be the new multi-channel 150-watt Keir Hammett signature model head and a whole range of high-end, high-gain old tube amplifiers. The collaboration produced a series of high-gain tube amplifiers, such as the 667 and the Trasher, and several signature models. In addition to the Keir Hammett signature model, Randall released the Ultimate Nullifier EN120 that was the signature amplifier of Scott Ian of Antrax. On January 1 of 2016, Fortin announced his partnership with Randall had ended. This was the last big announcement from Randall. After 2016, the only thing that we have seen is that they have been shrinking their catalog. Currently, they have a very small catalog. Almost all the amplifiers that were designed by Mike 14 have been discontinued, except the Randall Diablo line, the Randall Thrasher, and the Kier Hammett. All right, guys, so what happened to Randall amplification? I mean, their last big announcement, 2016, the departure of my 14 and after that the only thing that we have seen is no updates in social media no updates in their website no new artists no endorsements nothing first who are jam industries jam industries are a big corporation that owns multiple companies they are an international corporation focus on the music industry they didn't just bought randall they bought the other assets that U.S. corporations used to have, like Washburn and the other companies, right? JAM put another company in charge of all the assets that they bought from U.S. corporation, including Randall, right? They put KMC International in charge of them. And like I said, JAM is a big corporation. And remember, now we are talking about numbers. We are talking about money. JAM invested certain quantity of money buying U.S. corporation, and they were expecting certain kind of revenue after they made all their investments including the hiring of my 14 designing the new amplifiers distributing the new amplifiers uh, keeping uh, the big artists endorsed like scott ian and kir hammett and remember they gotta, gotta get paid uh, including the new artists that this company were bringing uh, all in england but like i said the biggest problem that JAM might had with Randall were numbers and with this I mean revenue how much revenue the company was going to give them to them and when 2016 came out um, they saw the charts and they didn't like what they saw you know like and remember this is an international company and here we don't have the passion anymore here we don't have the interest on innovation like when Don Randall was alive and this was about money and this is how it is until this day. And even if, when COVID came, you know, the only thing that we saw from Randall is that the amplifiers that were priced around $1,000 before 2020, they went all the way up for over $2,000. And this is very funny because if you guys remember when there was the guitar boom, back in 2020 because the COVID thing and a lot of guitar companies take advantage of this and made a lot of money except Randall. I mean Randall didn't do anything. Like I said, I don't see anything coming from Randall in the near future because they haven't and it's very sad uh, to see a company that was made uh, by a pioneer in the guitar industry in the guitar community that innovates so much in the 80s you know and even when Don Randall sold the company to US corporation we had these more innovations like the MTS models and even when JAM bought a company you know I think that they were in the right track and uh, but once again you know for them it's just numbers and the numbers are not working for them so it's no point to keep the company or at least they're gonna keep it that way until they get their money back or this was all for this video thank you so much for watching guys 
These were Solomon of Solomon Demos. Take care. Bye.